And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hello everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at the Catacombs of Karak, or Karak, or I'm not sure how to spell it, Crack and Lacken. It's a tiny RPG, a dungeon crawl where you're going to go and discover the dungeon as you go and fight monsters, but it's a really, really simple one. In fact, it doesn't say so on here, but you'll notice it says age is 7 plus. Well, you might not notice that, it's pretty far away. It says 7 plus on it. It's for two to five players, 45 minutes. This is definitely, regardless of what they say, this is definitely a kid's game, and I'm reviewing it as such. Let's get started. Each player is going to play one of the heroes in the game. You're going to start with uh, hit points here. Each hero has two special abilities. So you can see there are various heroes that are the typical archetypes of heroes uh, in a particular game. You're going to start here. The dungeon is going to be just this one tile here with a healing fountain in the middle. On a player's turn, they have four actions that they can do. And usually that's going to be moving as an action. And sometimes when you move, you're, you're going to draw you're going to go to a new spot, and when you go to a new spot, you might find just a tunnel like this, and then you can keep moving, so that'd be the first of my actions. But many times, much of the time, you're going to find a room. So when you go to a room, you're going to be pulling a tile from a bag, and there are various things you can find, but oftentimes you're going to find monsters. When you find a monster, you're going to have to stop and fight that monster, and that's also going to end your turn. When you fight a monster, you're simply going to roll two dice and try to meet or exceed that monster. If you meet it, nothing happens. If you beat it, okay, so let's say I just rolled a seven. I thought I rolled higher than that. It must have been a trick of my imagination. So if then you lose and you retreat one and you flip over one of your health. If you tie, nothing happens. Uh, if you win, you defeat the monster. When you defeat the monster, you turn it over to see what kind of loot it gives you. This one here happens to give me a key. Now, a key is important because every once in a while, from inside, when you pull a tile, you're going to pull a treasure chest. You can't do anything with the treasure chest, but if you have a key, you'll be able to open that treasure chest and keep it for treasure, which is how you're going to win the game. There are many different monsters that are included in the game. So you can see here, there's easy ones like this rat, the 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, and 15. Sometimes when you kill them, they're going to give you a weapon. This one here, for example, gives me one. That's a plus one added to all my rolls. Uh, this one here gives me a two. Now I'm adding three to all my different rolls. Sometimes they give me spells that I can use. Sometimes, like look at this one, this, it turns straight into a treasure. Here we have a plus three. So as you go by, you'll find these scrolls that you'll be able to use that might let you heal or re-roll dice. Speaking of healing, if you are completely knocked out, you lose your next turn, and then you simply will heal one health. So if you lose your last life point, then the next turn you simply heal one. Or if you stop on the healing fountain and end your turn there, you can heal everything. There are more healing fountains that can be found over the course of the game. And there's also portals. If you find a portal and another portal, you can go from one to the other. I did mention the special abilities. There's different special abilities that the different characters will have. For example, this one says if you move to a tile that has a monster as your first action, you get plus one. And you can also draw two dials from the bag, choose one, and put the other back in the bag. And each of these different characters has different special abilities. So you can imagine that the, the mage here, you know, when you, they use the magic bolt, they don't discard it and they can go through walls. While this character, you can reroll any one die in combat. And you can force your way past the monster, you lose a health point, but you can keep going so you don't have to fight different monsters. So there's all kinds of cool things that you can do. The game ends when someone beats the boss. The boss is a dragon, 15. Nobody can beat it until you have at least three points of weapons and then you roll a 12. That's probably not gonna happen anytime soon. But once a dragon is defeated, at that point, we're going to end the game. And then it comes down to treasure. Uh, when you, uh, whoever has the most treasure gets one, and the dragon's treasure itself is going to be 1.5 treasure. <laughs> There's a little gem in here. It's kind of a tiebreaker. There's also the curse. Whenever you kill a mummy, you'll be able to curse your opponents and they, the curse token 
is given to that person. And when you're cursed, you can't use your hero skills, which is kind of a very negative thing. So you can go to a healing tile to get rid of it. Or if you beat a mummy, then the cursed tile is passed to them. That's how you play. So I really like the fact that these boards here can easily have tiles in, they're recessed boards, and I really, really like the artwork of these characters. That's a really, I mean, it looks sharp. It's, ah, they just look fantastic. I like the art in this game. I am less impressed with the very, very boring tiles. I mean, this is like 90% of the game is flipping these tiles and seeing them. Maybe they could have put a little bit more effort into them. But, eh, that's minor, I suppose. At least the bag is big enough that I can pull from here. And I do like that the monsters are different colors, and it's, it's a really simple combat system, so it's easy to see these. And then you're like, ooh, what is it going to be? The rules are also really clear, and they even give <laughs> backgrounds to different monsters and such. Okay, very, very simple game. You turn things over, you roll dice, you use your special powers. But for kids, this is awesome. They don't need all these complexities. They don't need to figure out what flanking and all that is. They get to roll two six-sided dice and add. And as you go through, you get loot and your stuff gets better. That works. You look for keys. You run around. I mean, you're just kind of running around and finding random monsters and fighting them. And normally, I'm, I might not be a big fan of that, but I'm getting tired of dungeon crawlers being overly complex and there really isn't a big opening for them in the kids realm there's very few i mean the best one is probably hero quest which is really old at this point and hard to find this is not as even as complex as hero quest but it's a nice light silly game it says 45 minutes in the box but it could be faster than that once kids know what they're doing and what i really like about this is i can teach kids this game and then walk away from the table and i don't think they have any questions at all it's that simple. Is it something I want to play? No, there's other dungeon crawls and stuff. And I do wish that the art on the tiles was a little more interesting. When you're done, you look at your dungeon and you're like, meh. You know, it's just a bunch of winding paths. It's just the way you almost could have just flipped cards over to fight the next monster. There is some tacticalness of how you move around and oh, there's warp zones and such. But it's a fast paced game. I move, fight a monster, your turn. I move, fight a monster, your turn. I move, open a treasure, your turn. Boom, 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 boom. Nice. And so for kids, this works fantastic. I definitely recommend it for them. That is the Catacombs of Carrick. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment, kid approved.